Hey, Facebook. Good morning to everybody in our chilly uh, fall weather, which is not fall, but feels like winter. Anyways, just wanted to give you a, a new build update and kind of chat with you about upgrades um, in terms of which are worth choosing and doing and investing into. Uh, this week, I am going to the design queue, which if you know the new build world, Qualico Builders, which is Paysetter, Streetside, and Sterling Homes, use Design Q. Design Q is their huge design center that has everything that you would pick when you build a house. So that is the flooring, the kitchens, the tile. Well, that is flooring. Um, what else? All, all the insides um, of the home, doors, handles, all that kind of stuff, is picked at Design Q. So I'm going on Wednesday doing some filming to provide a video um, of a tour of the design queue and they used to have open houses um, prior to COVID they were already starting to shut that down and now of course they don't have that so it's really handy to know what's in there if you are thinking of building with them what are the upgrades what are standards because a lot of builders have their standard inclusions and then they have their different levels up because if you want let's say I don't know this kind of tile it's in this level if it's another level of time, it's a second level. So there's different levels of upgrades with builders. Um, right now in the new build world, in terms of the kind of the lowdown, um, we're still seeing some discounting. It's not substantial. It's still increased prices because of lumber. However, there is still some deals happening because there's a whole lot of um, people that have to now build build. They can't do specs or anything like that. So talk to me at the end of the year they always have year end i know that homes by avi's year end is the end of october um, other people's year builders year ends are end of november december so people are still trying to get their numbers in so if you want to get a deal give me a call and we'll chat about that because if you're building now and you remove conditions you're looking at a nine to twelve month period depending on the builder so you would be moving in around the end of summer early fall which is actually perfect timing if you need to sell a house as well so let's get into upgrades so which ones are worth doing what i'm going to do is i'm going to share with you my screen so that you can see the different trends that are happening as well one of the things i've been seeing a lot of for trends and i don't know if you want to do this in your house because it is very trendy and i've seen this in a lot of home shows and i don't know if you watch the netflix the new one i just started watching yesterday um with the mcgee and company they are, I'm seeing navy, that really rich dark blue um, is being used in a lot of interior design and apparently it's the new black. Now, I don't know if I want that in my kitchen cabinets because it's something that if you, it looks really cool at the show home, but you gotta live with it. So a better option to use the trends I personally find is to use that in your textures. So your window coverings, your pillowcases, your bedding, all the textures that can be changed um, because I have a problem with committing to color. I love the color that it is, but you can see my walls are white. Um, in our bedroom, our master bedroom, we will do a feature wall. Um, but in general, you want to kind of keep those bigger items to be more neutral and then it also saves you money when you're building because one color um, is included and lighter colors are always included. If you want to have a feature wall, I highly recommend that you do this on your own. So I'm going to start off by sharing my screen with you um, and you will see what we are looking at here. Oh, you know what? It's not going to let me, there you go. Chrome tab, share. Okay, so this is Howe's website. We use this a lot um, to help our clients kind of figure out their style and their taste. So this is gonna show you this, like here you can see the darker colors in the kitchen. Also, you'll notice that the black trim um, is important as well. So you can see the black trim has the, like for windows and all that kind of stuff. Now they're, they are costly. So don't get me wrong, these upgrades, are they worth doing? It depends on the cost of the builder, what they're gonna quote you, and it depends on what your style really is. But the black uh, trim for the windows is very popular with the industrial farmhouse, which is a big trend right now. So you can see the inside of these, uh, this home here with the gray uh, island, 
The two-tone uh, kitchen is still a trend that has stayed. It is usually worth the upgrade depending on what the builder is charging you. It typically doesn't cost you that much more to have an island color difference between the back. Now, if you're going to do a different uh, base cabinet and uppers, that's going to cost a little bit more as well. Um, Let's take a look at another kitchen. These wood hood fans are very expensive. So depending on the house price point that you're doing, it is not necessarily worth the upgrade. If you're spending over 600000 on a house, that is something you can consider to see if it's worthwhile um, fitting in your criteria and budgets. I wanted to bring up another thing with the kitchen on the left-hand side with the furniture with the like light beach color. That wood soft color is definitely a trend, and we're seeing that a lot in the homes of just that softer wood color um, to kind of go with the whites. Because whites, of course, has become a trend. I mean, it's a it's been around for years, but the white has become definitely more prominent um, in the last couple of years. This industrial black look in the middle here with the bathroom is definitely very much on point for trends and then the um the back or the backsplash i guess it's tile wall there with the kind of hive looking that that tile i started to see a lot of so you can see textured tile as a trend on wednesday when i go speak with the designers or we're going to chat about a little bit of the design trends and see what's coming for 2021 but these are some of the things i've noticed um in the homes that i've gone to so i'm uh, just take another look at some more pictures here so see how there's that blue? That blue is definitely very trendy. Um, and then the floating open shelves, I've, that's been around for a while and that's not necessarily very practical for people at home, but it is definitely something I've seen. Now, if you look at this kitchen on the right-hand side, you can see it is a bit more classic with that the white cabinets and the brown um, warm tones. That's not really trendy, but it is something you see that's from 2015. So it's still like if you were to see this house today, it would still be very considered trendy because of the, the rustic farmhouse look. But things are moving towards the more industrial farmhouse look. Now, these are the more traditional trends um, that you've seen. So you can see this is dated 2019 um, and different things that are kind of like classic, that white color. But like I said, this blue, show you this navy blue kitchen this is something that I'm seeing a lot of um, right here this color on the left hand side with the gold accents we're seeing that a lot um, lots of the show homes a lot of the designer um, shows and also for paint in the background like for your feature wall or um, wooden, wooden batten walls that are painted that color or if you just want to kind of go with the island again very different blues. Uh, some blues are more rich and deeper than others, but you're seeing these in the kitchen. Wouldn't really go with that blue on the right-hand side. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm more so talking about these ones on the left-hand side. So those are the designer trends in terms of like the kitchen. Um, when you look at flooring trends, there's a huge movement, and I'm sure you've noticed this, that people move towards a luxury vinyl planking. So even in the higher end homes, we were seeing luxury vinyl planking. Luxury vinyl planking used to be kind of the entry level cheap option to get in. Still looks lovely, very it's water resistant and kind of people resistant, lasts a long time. Uh, but you're starting to see the thicker luxury vinyl planking in the higher end homes. And so even in really, really high end homes, like million dollar homes, you will see luxury vinyl planking. Not totally seeing that yet. Um, so, in terms of what's worth doing, you want to take a look at the things you're not going to necessarily do, like the kitchen. You're not going to redo your brand new kitchen. So really think about what upgrades you want to do in that kitchen. Some are going to be worth it than others. Some are just going to be for your own personal satisfaction, but not necessarily resale value. Um, then there's structural upgrades that you want to do. So I'm talking when I'm talking structural, I'm talking about, hey, maybe do the nine foot basement ceilings because you can't do that after the fact. Well, you can, but it'd be very expensive to lift your house up and change the foundation. So you wanna think about those types of structural things to get done. Um, any things in terms of layouts that you have an idea for, make sure that you can actually, if you wanna modify later the floor plan, that it can be done, because sometimes there's structural issues and that's why you can't do those things. Now. In terms of flooring, that's another big item that you're gonna to wanna to invest in because you're not gonna to wanna to change flooring out. And one of the big things I talk to my clients about about flooring is when it comes to flooring with carpet, if you are doing carpet, make sure to check the underlay pound. 
poundage because if it is a lower pound on the four pound and lower, I'm seeing six and eight pound. This is decent. Um, it's people think, oh, if I the, the higher I elevate the poundage, the fluffier it's going to fe feel under my feet. Well, yes, that's true to some extent, but it also actually um, what's the word I'm looking for it makes your carpet last longer. So if you have the lower grade one, it's not only going to feel not as soft, it's also going to wear out a lot faster. And so think about the high traffic areas like the stairs where you're always walking back and forth. And also, unless you are like wearing socks and slippers all the time, and your whole family does that, and you're not doing bare feet, you're going to wear the, the carpet out because of the oils from your feet. Sounds crazy, but it is true. Carpet will last better and longer if you are wearing socks and slippers. But let's be honest, I don't like to do that because that's why we have carpet. It's nice and soft. And we just have that actually only on our staircase um, because it is the cheapest option when because builders include stair um, carpets on their stairs. If they you want an upgrade on that, it's going to cost more money for the stairs. Stairs are going to be more money than the rest of the house because of the labor intensive um, things that you have to do for your stairs. So take a look, flooring, builders usually include the flooring on the main floor for let's say luxury vinyl planking, hardwood, that kind of stuff, but not upstairs. Upstairs is typically carpet included. So do you want to do that now? It's probably better to do now if it's cost effective, because you're gonna have furniture, your bedding, if you wanna change out your flooring eventually in your upper bedrooms, it's gonna be a pain in the rear end because you're gonna have some have to move your bedding and all that furniture to wear because it's not like you're gonna move out. So I would highly recommend thinking about that. Um, if you're thinking about doing hardwood upstairs, it's very, very costly. Um, but luxury vinyl planking could be an option that could be feasible to do. Um, and it's definitely more worth the budget. And flooring makes a big difference for resale. It's a huge difference in terms of just the look of the property. Because if a house has like worn out carpets, people are gonna think that they have to resell. So percentage wise, in terms of your money back, we didn't have to talk about that on a one one to one basis, but yeah, that's my flooring advice for you. And then my structural advice for you is take a consideration about the um, actual ceiling height in the basement. Consider the structural issues with um, not issues, but considerations for your floor plan layout and um, what kind of ceiling height you want to do the main floor. Anything to do with ceiling height you want to really look at. And the other structural thing you want to look at is your utility room. Sometimes it's worth it to make sure all your utilities are in one space. That's an upgrade I think is highly worth it, if not financially also for your own convenience and not having an electrical panel in some random bedroom in the, in the basement. So take a look at those structural issues. Um, again, not issues, more so just concerns to make sure that's all there. For kitchen upgrades, you wanna make sure that you are not overspending in the kitchen. You can go crazy in the kitchen in terms of what is included and what's not included. Again, each builder is going to be different in terms of what they have included. And then also their upgrade prices are different. So if you're considering different locations, let me know and I can talk to you about what the different upgrade costs I've seen are. And you'll also see that you have to think about the inside of the kitchen. Some of the kitchens have for included, it's just a basic white um, MDF. If you want that wood, inside that's going to cost you more money if you want soft clothes some of it's included some of it's not take a look at like when you pull the drawers out not all drawers pull out as a standard uh feature not all the drawers actually pull full way out so you do sometimes have to upgrade depending on the builder the ones that open all the way out pots and pans drawers is something that i think is really important to upgrade to if they don't include that already um and then the style of backsplash that is like what we call the jewelry of the kitchen and so that's your personal preference it's not going to see a massive return but it's you want it to make sure it flows without the whole entire kitchen right and then the the appliances i do need to talk about that appliances are typically sometimes people kind of go overboard with the appliances depending on the kind of house that you have those appliances should stay within a certain budget if you decide to go over that budget for that specific house that's going to be some money spent that is for your own personal enjoyment, not necessarily for resale. So when you ask me if it's worth it to upgrade the kitchen appliances, it totally depends on how big the house is, what style of home it is. Is it a zero lot line entry level home? Is it a million dollar home? 
clearly there's going to be different spends. If you're spending kind of on the upper echelon of like even the $500,000 range of appliances for a house in a, a entry level home, that doesn't make sense. If you're cheaping out on appliances when you're building a million dollar home, that doesn't make sense either because that's going to bring your value down on your property. So hopefully some of that helped. Again, if you want to comment or send me messages before every Monday, I'm happy to answer any of your new build questions. And I hope you enjoy dreaming about building a house. Check out Howe's website. It's definitely really interesting to have your idea books and you can share them with me and I can give you an idea of what kind of price point that that dream house is gonna be and where can we build that here in the city. So we'll talk to you guys next Monday. See you guys, bye.